here in Disruptive Banking Tech. I have Daniel Hazley. He's the head of innovation at Aperture. Thank you, and also a speaker so at this event. So great to have you here. So Daniel, tell us a little bit about your background, your expertise. Sure. Yeah, so I've spent the last 13, 14 years in the uh, community and regional banking space, first as a, a banker, uh, serving a uh, community bank, or working inside of a community bank, or run electronic services, and then made my way over to the software side. We ended up building some software inside of a, uh, a community financial institution, divested that, uh, ultimately became a company called Aperture, where we serve uh, digital banking needs for 300 plus uh, community and regional financial institutions across the U.S. for anything from retail banking, business banking, uh, digital account origination, uh, a lot around data intelligence, as well as API banking, which is a really a fun space, things like embedded finance, banking as a service. Nice, and where are you guys based out of? Based out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Okay. The booming metropolis of yeah. <laughs> Wilmington, North Carolina. <laughs> nice, okay, that's great. So, in your talk, what are some kind of key thing, themes that you, you were bringing to the table? Yeah, that so the, the chat today was all about data, and specifically, uh, so uh, my role at the organization is I'm head of innovation, so think of um, a lot of zero to one products. Uh, how are we going to um, be able to build things from the ground up, commercialize them, and get them out to the market to where we're solving real problems? So, so much of today's discussion was connecting folks here at the conference so that they could share what problems are they experiencing. And it's really interesting, you hear these recurring themes that, that constantly come up. It doesn't really matter that the size of the organization, or whether you're a bank or whether you're a credit union, a lot of folks are struggling with the same uh, opportunities, or the same challenges, and data being siloed, and even if I can get a hold of it, how do I actually make it actionable so that I can do things with it? Uh, so, really good discussion. So that's kind of the, the key theme, is that people, ha they have the data, but they just can't really get to it, they can't make sense of it. You know, I, I think a lot of financial institutions out there would say, if you're starting with the place of we have the data, but how to make it actionable, that they they would see that as a, a, a first class problem. Even getting access to the data for a lot of these organizations is really challenging because it's locked up inside of a single or inside of uh, several silos that are just difficult for them. Particularly if you're an institution that you don't you're not full of engineers who can go and build all this stuff out. You're really reliant on partners like Aperture to be able to help you do that. That's what we do really well. Um, but then for those institutions, once they actually have access to the data, then there's the, the now what. I, I call the Google Analytics problem, where you can get a ton of data thrown at you and it looks fantastic on charts and graphs, but then what do you do with it? Yeah. So then, what's the biggest challenge, or what's the, the exciting thing for you guys, what did you see, like, hey, I like the, this one key aspect that I want to solve. Yeah. I know it's broad, I just, I always. <laughs> so, always trying to think out, like, broad strokes. Where are things headed? What are the big opportunities? It's really easy in, in my space to get caught up in the, the tools as opposed to the problem. So the, the data space is just chock full of buzz phrases. And <laughs> AI and now it's GPT yeah. and machine learning. And all of these things are, they have their place and they're really important, but they're tools unto themselves. And so if we look at, and take a step back and think, well, what are the problems that these banks are, banks and credit unions are struggling to, uh, why are they not able to better serve their customers? Or how is that shifting? We think that one of the big fundamental shifts is moving from being a reactive model, whereby you're waiting for your customers to come to you. They're logging into online banking or through their mobile app or been walking into your, your branch system and changing from a reactive model to a proactive model where you're in the catbird seat as a financial institution, you have access to um, and you have the trust of your customers. Um, so being able to amalgamate that data such that if you believe the, the premise that some inordinately high percentage, called 65% of people across the United States are to some extent financially illiterate. They may be extremely bright, but don't know how best to handle their uh, their cash flow if they're small business, or uh, how how they should be saving for retirement or saving for their children's education. That 
as a bank or a credit union, that's your highest and best purpose to be able to be that financial advisor for those uh, for that customer base. So the best way to do that is to be able to leverage data so that you can proactively bring to people's attention the things that they don't know they should be providing attention to. So do you think that's what's going to separate these better, bigger players? They're going to educate their customers more and take them down further along the journey? You know, I, so um, I do think it is going to separate those who are able to grow versus those who are going to shrink. I mean, it's not a secret at all. If you look at the number of financial institutions across the United States over the last 40 years, it's dropped precipitously and will continue to do so through consolidation, through regulatory challenges, whatever it may be. Those who are able to go out and solve real problems, meet customers where they are, and actually add value that decommoditizes the space. Right now, wh why should I bank with you when the bank across the street does the exact same thing? It's to be able to answer that question is what is going to separate those that, that grow and thrive. And we have partners that we're working with, our uh, customers that they're doing fantastic in this environment. You have others who are very much a kind of woe is me and interest rates are high and we're struggling to connect with our customers. We have the tools, now it's time to execute on it and be bold. So about that, being bold, so is there a lot of risk aversion still? I mean, because things are changing so quickly, but I'm sure a lot of you know, leadership sure. are like, hey, how, we don't know what to do, it's too expensive, I'm kind of stuck. And, and rightfully so. But banks and credit unions, bankers, by nature, like, you're risk managers. At the end of the day, you, you are taking bets on people for a living. And as part of risk management, certainly uh, what is happening with that customer's data, how you're interacting with them, there is a lack of clarity a lot of times uh, with regulation, certainly regulation is not keeping up with the pace of technology, that's not something necessarily new. And so banks and unions have these questions all the time. Chat GPT comes out in February, it kind of takes the world by storm, and so all of these banks are asking, can, can we feed into these? Do, do I want my, even my employees using this, much less the customers themselves? And these are all open questions for which we're all kind of finding our way through. And for us, from an Aperture's perspective, that's, that's what we do is help work with financial institutions to be able to answer those sorts of questions. But no question, that it's something that comes up all the time. Is There's probably the a lot of board. compliance and security questions about, hey, can we even use GPT? Of course. And so you, you help folks understand that, what, how to use it then? Of course. Yeah, yeah, and take, I mean, GPT is just an example, and it, it is it's a, a tremendous step mm -hmm. towards, um, I would say, democratization or the, um, the accessibility of, say artificial intelligence, but just uh, the humanization of uh, anthropomorphization, if that's a word, uh, of, we'll go with it, yeah. of a tool, right? Yeah. It's just, it's a large language model. Um, it is one of many solutions out there that banks are just trying to figure out. We, we know that we need to be able to use this and these sorts of tools. Where do we start? How do we go about it? And for a lot of them, it's starting with, okay, what data do you have right now? Has it normalized? Is it in a place where it can be leveraged? And then let's let's crawl, walk, run towards being able to leverage that. So you, you made a comment about building the zero to one. So when you work with a client, how do you how do you start with them? Because there's there's so many ways that you can start, especially when you're building something from scratch, when you're customizing something. What's the, the way you move forward with that conversation? The most important thing is have a, a very specific problem that you want to solve. If it's, hey, we have this tool set, we have GPT. Let's figure out how we can use GPT. Overwhelmingly likely you're going to fail. Mm. It's we are experiencing, or our customers are experiencing, a very specific problem. And then, what are the most appropriate tools to go and solve those problems? So as we are, are meeting with either prospects or customers, constantly harping back on, what's the problem that we want to solve? And that usually uh, will, will send us in the right direction. But nevertheless, as conversations move on, you're constantly moving back out into the, ooh, a shiny thing, let's, let's, let's use that. Yeah, GPD now, but it'll be something else 
else in of a course. few months from now. Of course. A few months. It, it, it could be <laughs> Thursday. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah next it's, week, we'll see what happens after this conference. It's wild how quickly things are moving. And uh, at, at the end of the day, for, for banks and credit unions, um, we don't believe that it's a... In this space, there are items that come up, which is kind of a, this too shall pass. We don't believe that to be the case at all on this front. Data, artificial intelligence, large language models, leaning on um, those sorts of tools to drive efficiency, to be able to uh, serve a broader spectrum of your customers, to be able to serve customers uh, more uniquely. Or so more you're saying it's not just a trend, rich. right? You see it as not a trend, it's just a new way of doing business. Thousand percent, thousand percent. Beautiful. And to close this out, any any final recommendations for you know folks out there that are in a leadership position? Maybe they're managing a mid-sized bank and they're trying to navigate this AI. We want to we want to have a better customer experience, but they're trying to you know manage yeah. the risk. Yeah. Ask questions. Find a partner. Find someone who has gone through and done this before, and be humble enough to ask the questions to to be able to um, to work through them together. And uh, I've seen a, a number of players out there who make a, a very firm stance on something that turns out uh, it's precipitous. You should not have done that. Go out and find a partner who, who can help you through that path. And don't necessarily get locked in on what the solution is going to be early on. Focus on a problem and let solutions then derive itself from that. Beautiful. I love the, the insight. Thank you so much, Daniel. Appreciate okay. it. Thank you so much.